Now, every Tuesday and Thursday, we have our man Tim Ord on. Tim Ord is the author of the Ord Oracle. You can go visit him at ord-oracle.com. And additionally, if you go over to tfnn.com, you can go to the services tab, and we have two fantastic webinars by Tim Ord that is the secret science of market tops and then six secret ratios every trader should know. We have gold making all-time highs. Tim Ord, how are you doing? Good, good. So, weird market. Uh, yeah. Next week from today is uh, election. So, uh, actually, I, I did go long today. Actually, I'll be long on the close officially, according to my market letter. Sure. But what's, what's going on every four years is kind of what we have right now. So it's, it's a nominally, this is not like a normal times, especially uh, my indicators are actually any indi indi indicators in the market. And we got a lot of type of uh, things. You don't get panic in this type of, of uh, environment. I don't know why, but the trend does not usually, the 10 day trend does not usually get up to 1.2. Matter of fact, it actually stays pretty low. I think we're 0.95, but that's, Let's start on the charts and see where we are. Uh, this chart. Yeah, I have chart, chart one up now. Yep. Uh, chart one. Oh, anyhow, the uh, this is the bottom window is a five day average of the advanced decline, and uh, it's another way to find panic. You know, all my indicators are are um, associated with basically panic, some sort of a panic acceleration of certain indicators produce panic. And there's a lot of different ways to get it. But once you get panic, uh, this is usually a good sign because you, you, the market won't bottom until it is panic. And this is another way to find panic. But anyhow, this chart goes back almost two years. And uh, again, there's a five-day average of advanced decline. But when that ratio gets down below 0.65, when we hit on Friday, another three days or two Two trading day, uh, or actually be three trading days ago, we had 0.63, mm -hmm. and that turned out to be a decent low so far. The market kind of bounced up, but if you look on the chart, uh, which is all those uh, uh, vertical red lines, kind of dotted or spaced uh, lines, there are times when this ratio got down to 0.65 or lower, and most 99, or I don't know what percentage, but. 90 or better percentage of the time, the market flips sideways if not reversed. Okay. Uh, and uh, what I'm trying to say here, downside is very minimal. Right. right. To get that kind of a sold out deal. So you really have no downside here. Market has bounced up a little bit. Was that a low on Friday? It wasn't the lowest low because last, uh, it'd be Thursday, we had actually a, a, a lower close but we did have a little bit of panic on friday enough to push this ratio down to point six uh, actually point six three so anyhow that's one of the reasons why i'm thinking okay we're probably not going to go down much you know uh, we may just flip sideways so let's go to chart two sure. kind of do some analysis here uh so th the top chart is the nyc mccollin summation index back on um uh what day was that uh, I don't have it. I think it was uh, September sometime or first of September. It's, it's been about a month. Uh, we did hit plus 1,000 without going below minus 700 first. So the mark kind of went down and all of a sudden just had a spurt of strength in September where this NYSE summation index did get above plus 1,000. And I marked the times in the past when this has happened. This goes chart goes back to 2007. And that green or is times when the McCollin summation index hit plus 1,000 without going below minus 700 first. Yep. So it's just kind of a sign of strength out of nowhere. Uh, so you didn't have a sign of weakness into a sign of strength. You just had a sign of strength. Right. And so, and you notice those times, the market really didn't correct. It, it kind of just stayed steady, if not moved higher. And that's kind of what we're having right now. Uh, the mar summation has backed off some here, but the market's pretty much has stayed strong, if not even moved higher, a little bit higher since the uh, first part of September. So that's another reason why I think you got to be long this market. And uh, so you, summation index, when you get plus 1,000, 
that's really a, a strong market. So you're really not showing any weakness in the market whatsoever. I see. So we got two different types of indicators kind of saying the same thing. So it's uh, chart three. Perfect. All right, chart three. Now this is the R. The top window is the RSI 14 period for the daily SP. Uh, this is on the SPY. It's good done with the SPX, but SPY. Uh, and I normally when you hit, if you get an RSI 80, in other words, that's a percentage uptrend in the market. Uh, so you, if you look at, you know, this chart goes back to 2015, and uh, oh, actually over the last 12 months we had it happen twice. But normally you'll get you'll get lucky if it just happens once a year. Uh, so this market's unusually strong. You get short-term corrections, the little squares on the chart, on the SP chart, which is the bottom window. You know, you can put short-term consolidations in. Uh, there's one in 2017. There's another one in 2020. That is actually, that little correction period there was the election. And it went kind of sideways for a couple, three months. And we had one in first, or uh, we had it on July 10th. Uh, yeah, July 10th of this year, we, we hit 81.98, 81.98, and the market did go down for a little bit and came right back up. Uh, you never get major tops when you get that much momentum on the RSI above 80. You want to stay between 80 to 85. If you get above 90, that tells a different story. I'll talk about it. When, when that happens, we'll... Uh, in the future, we'll talk about it then, but not right now. So that was another sign that the market just... You know, that's why I kind of kept bullish. I kept buying the, the uh, pullbacks over the last, since September, because I know the market wasn't going to go down much. So I came close. Actually, one I nailed at the bottom. The other one, I was a day off. Right. But now we've been cre uh, creeping up. And a lot of times this RSI uh, 80 area is the midpoint of the next move up. If you look at all these times in the past, a lot of times it came at midpoints. So I'm, I'm thinking we're just basically halfway done of this rally. So I hear Tim, the music. Yeah, Tim, stay right there, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. We're joined right now by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Before we went to the break, we were looking at the RSI in relation to the SPY. Uh, Tim, what else are we looking at with this chart? Oh, yeah, this is kind of looking at the bigger picture. And so we got several different examples that this trend has further to go. So let's take a look at the short term. Sure. Uh, which is uh, next chart. And uh, the top window is the SPL, SPY tilt ratio. And the next window down is just the SPY. This is a daily chart. And in general, the, the green part there shows times when the SPY tilt ratio is going up and the uh, pink times are when the ratio is going down. So you can kind of see the correlations there as this ratio rises, the market rises when the ratio declines, the SP declines. And I also have an RSI on this thing and the RSI is up around 60 area, 63, which a lot of times comes at tops. But there's also, you can use this chart as divergence. Notice, uh, if you go in that July period, July to August, you know, the market July top went went down. Uh, if you notice, going into mid-July, or the first week of July, the market was still going up. And if you look at the ratio, uh, that ratio was going down. So that was a bearish sign that the market was going to peak, which it did. Now, if you notice, over the last two weeks, I got a red arrow pointing down on the SPYs. Uh, connected to the tops there. We've been going you know, down to sideways over the last two weeks. And if you look at the SPY tilt ratio, we're actually hitting new highs or sitting at new highs. It's not going down at all. Matter of fact, over the last three, four days, this ratio has been going up. And the ratio trumps what the SPY does. So if this ratio is going up, eventually the SPY is going to go right back up. So... Uh, I started looking at this today, so you know I just don't see any weakness here. So even though the market's going sideways, the ratios keep keep hitting new highs. Seasonality turns super bullish the next week. It's one of the most bullish periods after an election because that takes the unknown out of the market, and markets ha uh, usually hate unknowns. And a lot of times, the market declines in an election. This year, it's not. I mean, 
I guess over the last two weeks, you can call it a decline. It's not much of one. It's more or less traded sideways. But um, I guess the markets already know who's going to be president here because we would have a, a steeper decline than what we're having right now. So uh, the markets has decided who it's going to be. And the RSI or the SPY tilt ratio is probably going to keep, keep going up. And we actually may... Uh, maybe trend sideways for another two, three days. But next week's probably going to be a, a pretty powerful week up. If you look at, uh, if you go into mid-June there, you see a sideways pattern? Yes. I wish we could draw on, a, on it. Well, yeah, we went sideways there, and that's really a good sign. If the market is unable to turn, even pull back in an uptrend, it's usually at a minimum halfway point of the next move up. We've pretty much been going sideways here since, uh, well, two weeks. Uh, so what, the first week or, or since mid-October, we've been going sideways. So it kind of gives you a projection that we're probably at the halfway point of the next move up. So I think there's still a good chance we could, uh, percentage-wise, you know, I think we still got at least 5%, maybe 10% before the year's out. So... We're, intermediate term indicators are not showing any signs of weakness so the market's uh, acceleration to the upside is is probably uh, going to be similar to what we had going into where we are right now so I, I think we got a good shot another 10% higher so we'll have a a 30% year this year probably is what it's starting to look like so, it's fascinating yeah. you say that because you know you also are getting some of the banks are coming out now some of their big analysts and saying that they uh, you know, predicting, you know, something like a 59 to, you know, 60 was actually too low, which is kind of in line with what you're saying here as well. So kind of interesting to note. Oh, okay. Uh, 60 what? Like, at least uh, for the price of the SPY. Like the, oh, you know, like right. 600. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we'll beat that. So, Big time. but yeah, it looks good. I don't see any, you know, there, there's always bearish stuff in the market, but I do a lot of momentum type studies and and the bigger trend is, is still bullish. How long is it going to stay bullish? I don't know because, you know, last year was a double digit year. This year is going to be a double digit year. We'll get right. another one next year. We'll have to wait and see. So um, I don't, I'm not a predictor. I'm more of a monitor. So as the numbers come in, I try my best to do analysis on it. So we got a little bit of time of gold here. Absolutely. Let's take a look at that. Uh, this is this is gold. This is kind of a momentum indicator. This is the bottom window. Seems uh, the up down volume for some reason works a lot better than the advanced decline. Don't know why. Don't care, but it does, <laughs> and so that's what I follow. And the bottom window is the GDX up down volume percent with the 50 day average. As long as that thing stays above zero, and we've been staying above zero since basically April, first of April. Uh, which is all that uh, the blue the blue part there are times when this ratio uh, or this 50 day average of the up down volume is above zero and we're staying you know I think yesterday we had like a seven plus we're down just a smidge 6.92 but we're above zero and, uh, and if you notice on on the top there uh, it's the GDX I got a blue trend line dotted trend line going across the top there and we broke above some previous highs around that 40 range. So the downside is about 40 is all there is. And uh, I don't know if we'll even test it or not, but uh, internals look fine. Bigger trends up. We are going to go higher. How much right. higher, don't know. Uh, but uh, so far, I'm not showing any weakness. So, you know, we've been up. Uh, this is, what, seven, no, six months. Uh, yeah, it's, been that, it's about five months, uh, April plus five is plus nine so about yeah six months we've been trending higher and um so far so good big time so let's go to let's go to the last chart all right this chart let's get it up uh, yeah this yeah this this chart kind of what i do with this chart picks uh, it it uh, i can find uh, short term high short this chart and the bottom window is uh, just the uh, cumulative advanced decline on the daily part next window up second window up from the bottom is a cumulative up down volume and the top window is gdx let's go to the top window i have a shaded pink area there if you notice back in december of 2023 
that GDX made higher highs, and I got a uh, red arrow showing that higher highs. If you notice, the uh, two indicators both made lower highs. So that's what normally shows up at uh, short-term highs. So then you got a decent correction all the way into March. Then the market rallies out of March. It goes into uh, May, which is that uh, shaded blue area. If you notice, GDX went down in that time frame. Yes. And both those indicators went sideways. So it wasn't confirming a high at all. Uh, then if you go into the green area, which is next, that'd be July, uh, the, the market went went down, just pulled back and made lower lows. But but the indicator of the uh, up-down volume basically didn't make a lower low. It just made a side low. So anyhow, well, currently we're making higher highs, higher lows on the market. And that's the definition of an uptrend. Definitely is. Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to see you Thursday, all right? All right, sounds good. Thank you. Fantastic. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back for a short segment.